To be my bride today is a very special day today is Harry and Meghan's wedding Yay. Um, so we are gonna be heading into Windsor a little bit later uh, to join in the celebrations and soak up some of the atmosphere mm-hmm we're very excited to see what Meghan is gonna be wearing and how she's gonna do her makeup but before we head into town Soph and I have done our makeup this is the finished look and we have kind of gone for a look which is similar to how we would do our makeup on our wedding days so we've gone for our kind of classic everyday look but a bit more intensified and a lot more long lasting so we're going to now show you how we created these two makeup looks give you a few tips on um, how we would do our makeup on our wedding days and also share with you our favorite Laura Mercier products Laura Mercier is a brand that we know that Miss Marco herself is a big fan of especially the primer so we thought what a perfect brand to use for the royal wedding day. So let's now cut to our beautiful bare faces, <laughs> warning in advance, yeah. and show you how we got this look. Let's get started. Okay, so Soph and I are barefaced. What have you got on your skin at the moment? Did you moisturize? Yeah, moisturize, that's it. Well, yeah. cleanse, tone, and moisturize. Cleanse, tone, and moisturize. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get started with the primer. Are you gonna go straight in with foundation? Oh, no, I'm gonna use primer You're gonna primer as, well. as well. Okay, you go first. Apparently that is a favorite product of Miss Meghan Markle. Soph and I are both using the shade Bisque, and it's SPF 20, so if you're getting married on a nice sunny day, this will protect the skin. So Soph's applying the primer with her fingers. I yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm applying it with a sponge. I guess it doesn't really make much difference. I think with your fingers it blends with the skin a bit I, more um, easily. I like it because I feel like I can get when, I, especially the primer, you can get really into like the creases of your face. That's true. That's true. And especially around like my nose, I think that's the bit where I can build up most oil. So I yeah. Like yeah. It Press really it soaked in a bit exactly. better. That's true. And you can see it's given both of us already a little bit of coverage. You could almost use this as like a natural everyday makeup. Yeah, you? definitely. Yeah. Very fresh. So we're both using a uh, foundation next. I was just going to use a tinted moisturizer, but I think for a wedding day, you need a little bit more coverage. I'm gonna go with the Candle Glow Soft Luminous Foundation, and this will give the skin a really nice glow, but not too much coverage. Whereas Soph, I think yours is a bit higher. Yeah, coverage. I've got the Flawless Fusion Ultra Wear Foundation. Um, I quite like quite full coverage, mm -hmm. um, and especially for a bridal look, you, I kind of want my makeup to last all day. Yeah, and I think when you're having lots of photos done, a full finish is important. Now we're both applying with the makeup sponges and this helps it to blend with the primer a little bit better, helps it to blend in with the skin a little bit better and both of these foundations you can really build up and get the coverage that you want. So I'll probably just do one light layer and I guess that one's already giving you quite a lot of coverage, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think I might go for a little bit more. I didn't put that much on my sponge. Yeah. Very buildable. And I want to blend it in quite well to my neck. I really like the shape of these sponges. These yeah. are the Laura Mercier foundation sponges and because they're almost egg shaped you can really get into... They're like a teardrop. Yeah, get into all the little corners. I always pat my foundation in a bit when I kind of go with a second layer as well to like... Yeah, because otherwise it can create a bit of swirlage on the skin, yeah, can't it? Yeah, and like too much build up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely want quite full coverage. Finding the balance between like a full coverage and looking cakey. Yeah, you don't want to look on your wedding day yeah, like, like totally. you've got too much makeup on. Exactly. It's a good full coverage, it's got rid of any areas of redness and yet it still looks like skin, which is what we want to see. I always have really bad under eye circles and I'm very conscious of them in photos, so for my wedding day and also for every day, I use the Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear from Laura Mercier. This has been a favorite of mine now for a good few months, so I think it's a good idea to use tried and tested products on your big day. I've gone for a shade, a couple of shades lighter than my skin tone, so you can see it's a lot brighter there. And I'm going to use my finger just to pat this into the skin. So what are you putting on under your eyes, Soph? I'm going for the Candle Glow Concealer and Highlighter. Okay, so I guess, I guess highlight's gonna just yeah, illuminate. illuminate around my eyes. Very good. I like the applicator of that, it's like a little yeah, sponge. Yeah, it's really nice. Is it click up? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Good for in the handbag. If you've got a makeup artist with you on the day, then they can just come and top you up using that, which is handy. With the uh, cream concealer, I also pop a little bit on my eyelids, and I find that this makes for a really nice base for any eyeshadow products that I put on afterwards. Just helps to prime the eyelid and make the skin nice and prepped, ready. I also do a really weird thing, which is I quite like leave it for a little while. You set it? I rub it in. Do you? No, yeah, because I think oh. like as it oxidizes, it gets a little bit thicker. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a good tip. I'm gonna try about my chin. I'm gonna leave this little goatee of concealer and try Sophie's tip. Alrighty, while that sets, I'm going to use the brow pencil. This is Laura Mercier Eyebrow Pencil in Ash Blonde. I had my hair coloured lately and my brows, I attempted to dye myself, so they're a little bit darker than my hair colour, but this is my usual shade and it is almost like a grey blonde, so a very natural colour. Should be quite a good colour for both of us, I think. And I'm going to just use very fine hair-like strokes to fill in any gaps in the brows. Right, so I've kind of got a little bit of foundation in my eyebrows, so I'm using a bit of tissue to get that out. I like that this one has the spoolie on one side, so you can brush them out and then fill them in. I would say probably get your eyebrows threaded maybe a couple of days before your wedding and then any redness will go down and then it's so much easier to fill in and create the shape if someone else has done it professionally for you, so it shouldn't take too long using something like a brow pencil. Once I've like rubbed through my concealer, mm -hmm. I then put my powder on before I do my eyebrows. Do you? So again, I give it time to set. You're so pro with the whole <laughs> setting. Okay, I'm gonna try blending this. I have very finger. oily skin though, so I feel like I've kind of picked up little tricks of how to manage my oil. Yeah, that's a good one. You know what? I can actually tell the difference now that I've let that set. Yeah. It feels a lot more... It's thicker. Kind of airbrush, yeah. I'm gonna tilt it again a little bit more towards Soph. Yeah, so once I've like set all my concealer in, I then put like loads of powder on. With a sponge? With a sponge. Ooh, new technique. And then I just leave it. Like, I don't rub it in. Really? Yeah. Is that baking? Is that what baking is? Yeah, but I don't think I do like proper baking, but I kind of, I and find- And will you blend it with a brush afterwards? Yeah. Ah. This is like m probably my favorite makeup product ever. Really? Yeah, it, oh, like wow. genuinely. Cause some powders I think kind of end up going quite cakey when you use it, but this yeah, just doesn't. never does. And it's you don't get any flashback from it either, so it's perfect for wedding. Very important for the wedding day. We're both using the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. So Soph, as you can see, is using a sponge, which is a technique that I've not tried before. And I like to just use a fan brush. I tap any excess off, and then my skin's fairly oily everywhere. Um, so I just wipe this all over, and then just make sure the teaspoon is definitely got enough powder in there. I'm outlining my brows, so I've got quite thin, naturally quite thin brows, and I quite like, I like them to look fuller, but I don't want them to look too fake, so I mm -hmm. just like l use a very light brush and I outline them, and then I fill them in afterwards. Look, so I'm them. gonna now use the brow pomade. Um, there's a powder and also uh, wax, wax yeah. yeah. Um, and I use a, like an angled brush, and then I like sort of create brows with mm -hmm. that rather than the pencil. After the pencil. Oh, so you created the outline with the pencil, pencil and then I use ah. this. To, it's a finer brush. Yeah. And um, yeah. All right. Mm. Very good. <laughs> and I am going to now set my brows using the brow dimension. This is a fiber brow gel. So if you have quite sparse eyebrows like I do, then this has got tiny little brow fibres in there which helps to build up the volume and give the illusion of thicker more bushy eyebrows as well as also setting them in place. This comes in a few different shades so you can find one that perfectly matches your own brow hair colour. Obviously at the moment it's quite on trend to have really big brows but mm -hmm. when you look at photos in like 20 years time you look like too bold. <gasps> That's not how, bri how brows, they're not on trend anymore no. so try and keep them maybe a little bit natural. more natural to how you, you would usually do your brows. Yeah that's a good point. Hmm. Don't want to be looking back at those wedding photos in 20 years. Yeah, and just be like, what did I do to my brows? <laughs> oh my goodness. On that note, I'm not going to do anything too wildly different to my usual eye makeup looks. I'm just going to use a series of browns, surprisingly, eyeshadows, starting with a lovely light brown shade, and I'm taking that on. This is Laura Mercier's, uh, it's actually called the Finishing Ponytail Brush, but this one I find is really nice for a very soft overall colour on the brows, and I'm going to take this lighter brown shade all the way up to the brow bone. So with the brow pomade, I feel like because it's a wax, it does set them quite a lot, so I don't need to use a gel. A gel no, the wax like kind it's of already sets. set it. Good thinking. And I, I'm going for quite a natural look, so. Don't want anything too bold. No. So I'm now going to move on to my slightly darker brown colour and I'm going to try and smudge this into my lash line. I don't usually wear eyeliner, so I wouldn't wear thick eyeliner on a wedding day. So what I'm going to do is take the clay smudge brush from Laura Mercier and I'm going to take a darker brown eyeshadow to push this into my lash line. I'm also using the finishing ponytail brush to get my base color for my eyes. I'm going for like a slightly pinky shade. Um, mm. It's almost skin tone. Yeah, and I think it just 
suits my complexion quite well more than I think brown can sometimes be a little bit um cool cool for mm -hmm. my skin mm -hmm. I usually go for like a slightly thinner nib I think this might be supposed to be a concealer brush because it's called secret camouflage but it's got mm -hmm. a very thin flat nib mm -hmm. so I feel like you can get a little bit closer under your eyelashes yeah for your um eyeliner look yeah taking the face brush and this is a really handy size from the handbag to apply a little bit of bronzer all over to warm up the complexion when i do my bronzer i kind of do it in a shape of a three so like oh. and then down mm -hmm. and that kind of gives gives um a little bit more shape to the face which exactly. is exactly like very good idea i'm actually using a highlight this is the um, it's called the Face Illuminator in Indiscretion and it's a powder but I really love to use this with the finishing ponytail brush on the eyes because it just gives a very very soft pearly shimmer. So I'm just applying that in a C shape on the crease of the eye. And it's not like a glittery eyeshadow, it's not too OTT but it's just a very very soft glow which I think is perfect for a bridal makeup look. That ponytail brush is like so multitasking, yeah. it really is. So seeing as I've got individual lash extensions, which again is something I would really recommend before your wedding day, I'm only going to pop a little bit of mascara on the lower lashes. But to be honest, you don't even need to for everyday makeup, but I just want this to be a little bit more bold. After I've done my bronzer and my blush, I'm now gonna go in with powder again and just Ooh, anywhere where I set it down again. Yeah. And it's sort of where I patted it in quite heavily, it's sort of set already. Mm -hmm. So it's just removing anything extra and just checking that. I'm happy with everything. <laughs> Your makeup is not going anywhere. <laughs> that just flew off me. <laughs> and I'm also going to use the contour brush to apply a little bit of blush, just a very, very soft pink colour on the apples of my cheeks. This is kind of like a slightly more intense version of my everyday makeup because I'm conscious that I definitely want to look like me for a wedding day. But you also want to be a little bit heavier just for the cameras. Yes, heavier and more mattified than yeah. you would normally be. I'm going to do what um, Josie's already done with the highlight and just again put it on my brow bone. You're using the clay brush. Oh, I did is not that? mean to use oh. <laughs> This is the best, most it versatile is. brush It's the shape ever. of it because it's like, I don't know how you describe it. It's Dumb. kind of like pointed at the top. Yeah, it works for so many things. But yeah, I'm just going to do the same and put it on my brow bone. Brow bone. And I'm moving on to lips already, which means we are nearly done. This is my absolute favourite for both a natural lip look and a more dramatic lip look because it's kind of like a your lips but better shade. This is the Laura Mercier Hazelnut Tea Lip Liner, Lip Crayon. Lip pencil, third time lucky. I feel like just from the name, you can tell this is an amazing one. <laughs> Hazelnut tea, that is like the perfect brownie pink shade. Um, I have taken off, I always apply lip balm before my foundation, so I've blotted that off, and I'm now just going to exaggerate my actual lip shape just to give them a little bit more volume. I'm now gonna do another few little strange trick, tricks with the highlight. <laughs> <laughs> what are your tricks? My tell tricks. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of highlight on the tip of my nose. Um, again, like I already said, I'm, I'm a little bit conscious of my nose, um, especially from the side. Mm. So I feel like when you put a little bit of highlighter on the tip of my nose, for some reason it just catches the light slightly differently. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's a weird one that I do, but great like tip. It. It <laughs> works. So yeah, I just put a tiny bit of highlight on my nose, um, and it just kind of makes it. As you turn to the side, it, it obviously isn't part of my cheek, yeah. which is something I think I worry about. Oh. And another place I put highlight is the corner of my eyes. <gasps> that's a good one. And then for the lips, this is something that's been in my makeup collection for a couple of months now. It's the Laura Mercier Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick in the shade Vibe. This is super easy to apply on the go because it is a crayon. It's also got a sneaky sharpener in the top here, and it's kind of the perfect spring pinky nude shade. Okay, so I'm now doing my lips. Um, I'm using the same lip pencil that Josie used, which is the Hazelnut Tea. So lovely. Such a versatile Such a one. nice colour, yeah, definitely. And it's like a really warm nude, which is perfect for a wedding day look. For sure. So I've just finished with the Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick, and as you can see, it's, it definitely is like a velvet finish. It's not totally matte because it's not really drying out the lips, and it's just the most beautiful colour. Hopefully you agree. I feel like this is... Just an, an everyday lip colour, but slightly more intensified. So this whole theme is you on an everyday basis, just one step up. We were just saying, we wonder what Megan is doing right now. She is gonna be walking down the aisle in. So it's currently 10 a.m. She's gonna be arriving at the church in just over an hour. Sophie and I are gonna head down that way as soon as we've finished our makeup. 
I'm onto my finishing touches now, so I'm just going to, I think I'm gonna apply a little bit more highlight just to bring a slight more pop to my cheeks, and then I think we're done. I'm just, yep, yeah, my last step is my lips. Um, I'm going for a different shade to Josie. Yeah. Um, it's the Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick, which is the same, is it the same mm -hmm. one? Um, but Respect is the colour. So it's a little bit more of a nude, nude shade. shade. Um, mm -hmm. Quite a, like ashy colour. Yeah, really nice. I think that'll look really lovely with the hazelnut tea um, yeah, lip definitely. liner. Yeah, This is so creamy to apply. Like it's close to a natural colour, mm -hmm. which I quite like. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, isn't it? That is really, really lovely. Very, very nice. So yeah, I think that's... Done. done. So these are our finished makeup looks. We've both gone for everyday makeup but better, would mm -hmm. you say? Yeah, yeah definitely. More intense on the eyes and a slightly more higher coverage on the base. So now we have to go and get our frocks on, go and adjust our hair, and then we will show you our finished look. Believing in me 